Hello friends, it's me again. I'm still alive, don't worry. Some of you have sent me a message asking me if I was also outraged about the F8 Golden Ticket event, the fiasco as they called it. They were worried that CIG said many years ago that the F8C would be exclusive and then seem to do a pump and dump flash sale. I have prepared this short video on the subject for you. I want you to comment in the comments because that's how we all gain an appreciation for each other's perspective. And I genuinely love having my opinion challenged by the community because that's how I learn. We begin. I will acknowledge that this sale, this event, does go contrary to what was said a long time ago on Reverse the Verse five years ago with Chris Roberts. So, to those who are upset, I suppose your frustration and disappointment can be seen as justified. I actually had decided to stay away from Spectrum lately because it's become even more silly since the F8 event began, even more silly than standard. It becomes depressing to me to see what we assume are grown adults fighting over what is in essence a nothing burger. A space ship in a video game that hasn't even been released yet. Lots of people have lots of money tied up in the game, I get that. But I actually feel that this is just that vocal minority situation and most of the silent community is perfectly fine or don't have time to have an opinion. Again, comment in the comments with your opinion because it's important. But Chris said, is now my least favorite thing to read in any post on the internet. Chris said a bunch of things. Ben Lesnick said more, Todd, Tony, Aaron, and Sandy. Everyone said something over the years. And I will address that soon, but a little bit later in the video. If you're new and don't know what all the fuss is about, I can provide some context. The F-8 ship is a little bit special. It's the most current fighter in the UEE fleet. It replaces all of the legacy ships, such as the Gladius and the Hornet. There are other new ships out in the verse, but the F-8 is the one that the UEE bought for official business. On paper and in practice, it's quite a killing machine. On paper, if you don't have one, you're at a disadvantage, and in practice, it's strong, but it'll probably be nerfed like the Ion if it's proven to be too strong. The Sabre and the F-8 were both being evaluated by the UEE. The F-8 won the contract, but the Sabre remains as an option for civilians. I actually did a video on the history of the F-8, and that's linked up for you right now. So, the F-8 can be seen as Star Citizen's fifth generation fighter, if you're up on your modern jets. And those are the Su-57, F-22, F-35, and others. Unlike what we saw in the new Top Gun movie, these fifth gen jets make older generation jets obsolete in a head-to-head -head fight. The F-8 should therefore be seen as a golden god gun of spaceships. It has been a special reward for those who support bigger into the upper levels of concierge and we were told that there would always be a way to get all ships, even the limited ones, to a point for fairness. Chris said that he would not release a truly limited ship to prevent the accusations of pay-to-win mechanic and also to preserve fairness and balance. But because the game isn't launched yet, there's no real way to know if that statement is true or not. But I do believe it was true when it was said, and we do have to trust the company. If you don't trust the company, then why are you on the train? Why would you be buying ships? And why are you even watching videos? The community in general continues to be excited and continues to trust. So five years ago, Chris indicated that he was thinking about how the F-8 balance would work. He acknowledged that it was a special ship. The F-8 would be universally available as a token after the player completed Squadron 42 on perhaps one of the more hard difficulties. An incentive to play on hard, which would unlock that token for people to acquire the F-8. Concierge still had their exclusive reward, but because anyone could technically also have it, it was fair. We could say that balance is preserved, fairness is preserved. To me, a fun sounding idea and a good grind, a reason to try something harder. And despite the golden ticket event, this entire plan could still be part of Squadron 42. They never said it's one or the other, it can still be both. Another thing to remember is that he never indicated that the token and the ship with it would be free. A similar fairness has already been preserved with the exclusive Mustang Omega, an exclusive and very limited AMD skin on a starter racing ship. Not everyone can buy the Omega, but anyone could buy a Gamma, which is basically 99% the same ship. Fair, or at least as fair as one could expect in theory. There's also the question of the Saber Raven. Will that ever be available for everyone to buy in-game? Will they eventually put it on War Bond sale for real money? It's even more rare than the Omega, and you needed to buy a physical piece of hardware to get one. There's still time to see how that'll be addressed based on their own policy, and I still trust that CIG will get to this eventually. Flight models are being overhauled, balance will be overhauled, things are being buffed, and things are going to get nerfed. So, let's discuss Chris Roberts and his daily Kobayashi Maru, or Minefield. Your choice. 
the decisions that Chris and his executives must face every day. Choosing action with no right answer, no perfect answer. And no, this isn't some kind of white knight rant. You guys know me better than that. Project is a game in development and I have accepted that CIG has and will always choose self-preservation over the risk of blurring something that may have been said five or more years ago. They are a company first and it becomes particularly clear when special events conveniently also pay the bills. It's pretty clear when Chris might choose finances and stability at the risk of something that was said on ATV RTV 10 for the chair in some newsletter, some stretch goal or a Kickstarter campaign. Chris is the CEO and head of a business first. People rely on him for their livelihood. So, sure, yes, you can be upset about the golden ticket event if that's what you want, but bankruptcy invalidates everything and helps nobody worse. If the plan was executed as originally stated on Reverse the Verse five years ago, that would lock F8 access to players who play Squadron. We are excited for Squadron, but not everyone is actually interested in it. If everyone is to have a fair opportunity to own all of the ships for the PU, and this includes the F8, then you can't put a golden ticket behind a game paywall. Being told that the only way to get a game asset would be to play another game introduces its own problems. Not everyone will play Squadron, so to me at least the golden ticket, the current event, has addressed that. And second is honoring every statement to the letter more important than the funding required to continue development. It's up to us backers and fans to trust that the company is working to develop, that these decisions may not have a perfect answer. Some eggs need to be broken to make our billion dollar omelet. Some plans made years ago may not work now because of how other factors may have evolved. Most of the mechanics are not how they were presented in the original developer's guides, but overall, I can still take a snapshot today and say, yeah, I'm still on board. What's being made is still what I want to play. So that's it. Balancing the needs of a small group can be a challenge that expands exponentially as the group gets larger. I hope the video was fun and I remind you that your opinion matters. Please stay tuned because I'm ready to get over the last three month pre-convention info drought. Fly safe.